working with puppets like these dogs, it takes a lot of experience to know how to really bring a face to life. Even if you have the best sets and the best puppets and you're all ready to go, the animator is really the one who has to go behind a black curtain and turn this scene into something that has life and has emotion and has vitality. We're trying to get a performance out of these lumps of metal and rubber and silicon and they're inanimate objects, but we have to bring life to them. I feel like I'm sculpting the performance. It's, it's what kids do when they're playing. I do think of it like moving sculpture, really, you know? We talked about at a very early stage in the production how the dogs and the humans would actually move and behave. My process is just to sit and watch the animatic. Stop licking your wounds! From the timings and the atmosphere, what Wes is looking for. It's working with those rhythms within the film. We've got an amazing cast on this production. The animation comes out of that. You get their personality coming out in the style of the dog. We're listening, Al. Tell us your message. The voice gets recorded ahead of time. Why? What? Gets broken down phonetically. The actual human characters, they've got a replacement face system. All of the faces were handmade, hand sculpted. It takes up a lot of people's skill and craft, but that's exactly what I think Wes wants to see. And I think it does give it a life to it that isn't present in some other stop frame animated films. The dogs themselves are lip sync. No, you can't ride the pagoda slide. We physically can open their mouths. Who told you that? dirty lie. Make their eyes bigger or they can snarl. We basically had a, a database of dog action. So the animators could have something to base their animation on. The way they walk can give personality to a character. That's always one of the hardest things to do in animation is, is a walk. Working with Wes, we started doing labs, which are live action videos. He would suggest ideas for movement or gestures or an emotional state that the characters would need to be doing within their performance. And that's where the animatic and the lav all come together, like a little route map for where the animators need to go. I bite. It's a struggle just to pull something out of your imagination. So I started filming myself. I saw my animation just became so much better. Just the, all the subtleties that you put in. The animators do get cast according to their strengths. You know, some animators are great at uh, getting the nuances of something really, really subtle and getting emotional. I can hear you. Other animators are much better at action animation, jumping and running and that kind of thing. This one has a lot of characters. Once all the dogs explode, the clouds will start to dissipate and then everything will speed up. Some people are really good at comedy and timing within comedy. That's a very hard thing to do. You make me sick. I've heard people laughing at their own shots because they're animating and as they go, they just start laughing at what they're seeing, being born as they're doing it. Sometimes you don't even really know how it's going from their minds through their hands into your movie. <laughs> 